Fathead Pizza. This looks like it's two words in all caps, but it's supposed to be one word all caps. That's where we are, Cable 15 TV Live. I assume that we're all running into some technical issues already. Y'all know that guy, that's Ben Black right there. This is Hayden Schultz, I'm David Black. Josh Nation behind the camera and our good friend Alton Walker is joining us to talk a little Greyhound football and finish up on a great year, guys. We're trying to figure out what we need to do right here where we can see it, but what the heck, we really don't have to see it. Hey, Hounds finished nine and three on the year, but I mean, overall, great year for Newport Greyhounds in the playoffs for the second round. I uh, just like the way to see the 10th graders that moved up, the way that they uh, come in and done the things that they've done. I mean, every every week, Eli, Jadarius, those those 10th graders that moved up did well. And the seniors, we're going to miss them. Clemmie Alcorn, Monkwell Cox, I mean, Justin Simmons. I mean, those guys were, were big in the, you know, nine wins that we got this year. I mean, we're going to miss a few other offensive linemen. Chaser Prince is going to be gone, too. And we're going to miss a few guys, but don't, don't worry, because we're, we're, we're going to be reloading. They say we're going to be reloading next year. The ninth graders moving up. A lot of them have already playing, and I'm excited to see what these next two, three years are going to be for Newport Browns. Well, I did a little research today, and I kind of want to throw this at you. In the last four years, our football team has won 37 football games. So you talk about a lot of guys that were involved in a lot of those games. We've won 37 football games. Now, you have to go back. In four, to, to get four football teams that won that many games, you have to go back to 95, 96, 97, and 98 to find teams that won 37 football games. And then you have to go back to 94, 95, 96, 97 to find a team that won more than 37 football games. They won 38. So overall, the Hounds had an outstanding year. When this year, I mean, they went nine, they went nine, they won eight, they won 11 the year before. So just looking back on what the Greyhounds have done, then the Hounds have been just, I mean, simply outstanding the last four years. Yeah, you just look at, like you said, the wins in the last four years. And it's been how long ago since we've even tied that? Oh, 95, 96, 97, 98. In the mid 90s. Uh, you're talking about some tremendous, tremendous Greyhound teams uh, that went down in history and some of the greatest of all time in that time period. And as we're living this thing right now, you don't realize it, but man, we've had some tremendously talented teams the last several years. Just some great kids, and like Hayden said, they those seniors. We're going to miss those guys. You always miss that core group of seniors. I don't care uh, if it's 10 or 100 of them. Uh, you're always going to miss those guys and what they bring to the table. But those juniors understood the role, and they came up under a good senior class. So they step up into that role and just take over. And it's just kind of like nature. It just takes its course. And the younger guys move up, and they take over. But uh, we're excited about the year. You know, it was a good year for Coach Heisley and the Greyhounds. And, uh, we just, you know, fell a little short this year. But uh, like Hayden said, we got some, got some guys coming, man. It's going to be something to watch. I think what was real impressive to me was to look at and, and either read or have Linda read to me the comments that our seniors made about playing in their last football game because it, it, it you, you can talk about it, you can talk about the preparation, but until it happens to you realize that you'll never wear that orange hat again, that you'll never put on that uniform again, that you'll never walk out there for those Newport Greyhounds again, it never hits you until it's over. And then when it's over, it hits you hard and it's happened to all of us. You can be mindful of it. Uh, I was mindful of it. You always taught me that you know there will be a day when that you know you play your last game and you wear that helmet for the last time, and it doesn't matter. Uh, even if you know it's coming, you just can't experience it until you experience it. You know, but uh, it's a it's a tough time for those seniors, and you know, guys, we've been there. We know we we all three done it, and we know exactly how it feels. So. You know, life will go on, but you just got to come back and you got to support those kids and remember what it was like wearing that orange helmet and being a great kind of representing what you represent. Hey, do you remember what you felt like when you walked off that field for the last time? The last time we played Star City at home, lost the first playoff game. Uh, it didn't really hit me then. It, it really didn't. I went home and really didn't think nothing about it. Went on, and, you know, they already started lifting weights and going through that. We started baseball, and it really didn't hit me until. After baseball, I was like, I'm done being a greyhound. I mean, it just it all hit me at once. The last time I got off the baseball field, I just started thinking about football. And the next year, I, I did. I came to games. I did, and, and man, it just hurt sitting in the stands, just watching and stuff. And then 96-7, Kevin asked me if I wanted to do the sideline report the next year, and I loved it. And then y'all came and asked me if I do this. And I just love being around it. Like I said, it, it it took me a little longer because I. 
I don't know. It was just weird. I, I'm, I'm different, I guess, in that aspect. When I walked off, I didn't. I'm not big on showing my emotions in front of people. That's just how my dad is. That's how. That's just how we are. I mean, even my brother. We're just not big on that. But yeah, it did hit me at the end of my senior year after baseball season. It hit me hard. Well, I am an emotional guy, but I most people don't know that I'm a real emotional guy. And I can remember walking off. It wasn't the last football game that I played, but it was the last home football game that I played. And I think that was enough to really, really hurt somebody. But I remember walking through the little gate. We had one little small gate about this wide that everybody walked through. Pretty close to where the gate is now, but just kind of on the, on, the, on the west side there. But everybody walked through there, and we had the little round thing that we ran through, put a little paper, it's just a little round thing, not a big thing in the hand. But I remember, and I just... I didn't plan it that way, but I remember walking off the field. It was a game we won. We won the football game, but I remember turning around and looking back and said, I'll never play here again. We're not going to playoffs. We had Batesville to play the next week, and I thought, this is going to be a sad, sad feeling. And it was for one week. But that next week, when Batesville kicked a, a, a 43-yard field goal with five seconds on the clock to beat us nine to seven was a little bit more sickening than me walking off the field. So the last game, I, mean, I, I wouldn't care if it had been Cersei or whoever. It didn't matter that it was baseball. It really didn't matter. I never had any bitterness in that Newport baseball. I never in my life had it. I just, it just didn't. It just, I had lots of great friends in baseball, and I know it was a great rivalry back in the time. I made a lot of great friends because of athletics and in. in uh, uh, in, in sports and, and playing against the Pioneers and, and, and loved every minute of it. But boy, to lose 9-7 to seven on the last play of the game is kind of tough. And, it, and we had a losing record that year coming off a of record of 11-2 and two and playing for a state championship the year before. But uh, there's no doubt once it's over, it's over and, and there's, you know, you don't ever know how you're going to react until it happens. But uh, Ben, talk about your senior year a little bit. Uh, boy, y'all had a great football team. Yeah, uh, I'm just sitting here thinking as you were talking about your senior year and you know, some of the ball team you played on. I remember my junior year, you got to back up a little bit, kind of get some hindsight. Nobody really expected us to do very much. We lost homecoming that year to Beaver Springs, which was like uh, unbelievable for the town and everybody. We just couldn't believe it. You just don't lose homecoming. It's a great now. But we did my junior year. I uh, believe we. We lost to Pocahontas. They beat us the first game of the year pretty good. And then, well, I think it was, was it the second round of the playoffs that we played Pocahontas? David, who did we have first round? Uh, did we come straight out of the gate and play Pocahontas the first round? It's, uh, that's the big game that we won. Yeah, they were 10-0. They were 10-0. They got a that bye. Was, that was the second. Second, second playoff. Oh, yeah. Who did we play the first round? I'd have to look it up, but I can remember it. Anyway, uh, we go in to beat Pocahontas, we make a run in the playoffs, and we're all going, man, we were better than we thought, you know. So we lose that senior class. Come into offseason, put in the work, do what we all do, come back that spring, or excuse me, get ready that fall to start playing. We play Pocahontas again at Jonesville uh, at Red Bull Stadium, and we beat them like a drum. And we thought, man, these guys were horrible, you know. Second game, Gosnell, beat them like a drug. Thought, man, those guys are horrible too. Everybody we played was just horrible. And we look up. You got on a roll, didn't you? We got on a roll, man. We had to beat Lone Oak. Uh, I guess Lone Oak would have been the last regular season game. The year before, yeah, your junior year. Okay, but it was still the last regular season game of okay. senior year. Okay, I got you. Uh, we beat Lone Oak. We are undefeated in, in conference. Won the conference championship outright, undefeated. We get a bye. So, We've been practicing for five days or four days and playing a game on the fifth day all year long. When we get this bye week, it was just kind of like we were all on vacation, you know, our hands weren't in it. We just kind of just threw us for a loop. You know, it just it wasn't our routine, and we just had a, the next week, the week of preparation uh, for Dumas, the second round. We just weren't we weren't in our groove, man. You know, we hadn't played on Friday night. We wasn't in that groove. We just taking too much time off. and. Should have won the ball game. Was it 50? 51 48. 51 48 of Arm Burner at, at Greyhound Field. And I can remember at halftime, we went in and we were winning. And I remember a guy coming up to me and telling me, it ain't over, guys. It ain't over. They're going to they're going to come back out and try to win it. They're win, they want this game. He said, it's not over. Y'all got to just keep plugging and keep plugging. And sure enough, uh, there were more points scored, I believe, in the fourth quarter than there were in the first half. Well, three different times we had double touchdown, double digit or double touchdown leads in the second half. 
in Dumas overcame them. They just had a Kendall Council. Kendall Council, man, that name still rings in my head, and I can still hear it bouncing off those sycamore trees down there in the end zone and just rattling downtown Newport, man. Kendall Council with another touchdown run. And it was a great battle. Ed Pruitt, man, he had a tremendous game, had two leaping touchdowns to dive over a defender into the end zone. Uh, just exciting, exciting time in my life, and uh, we fell short. You know, and that was my last time to walk off that field. And I remember specifically just taking my time, easing back, talking to those underclassmen, and telling them, you know, keep it this thing going, you know, keep it going. And I can specifically remember walking into the back of that key building and just, I, want, I took in everything, the smell of the locker room, uh, the feel of that old sweaty jersey and your, your shoulder pads, you know, just taking them shoulder pads off and putting that helmet up there for the last time. And, uh, it was something special. It was sad, but uh, I will cherish those memories, and, and you always will. You know, it, it, even though it was sad at the time, I look back on it. It was a great memory uh, to know the hard work that I put in. And all my life, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> but I knew one thing: I knew I wanted to be a greyhound, and that's all I ever wanted to be. And it took me. Hayden talked about taking a, a year off, you know, not working, you know, not being hands on with them. I took. A couple years off where I didn't even go the first year I don't know that I went to a game in the regular season because I was so sick man like I, I was just I was sick about you know it took me all year to get over it and I finally started getting back to regular and then eventually got on the broadcast with you and, uh, but it, it's a it's a gut-wrenching time the next year or so as you get over it but you will the older you get you'll look back and those memories will just you know, just get better but the pain goes away and you just remember it as a good time well we're at Fathead Pizza Company in uh, Highway 367 North in Newport. We will thank them for setting us up a nice little place back here in the back and getting out everybody's hair. Got a big crowd. And you know what? Well, I ask you to come on out and join us if you'd like. And uh, uh, but we also want to say, uh, talk about Henry Boys a little bit. We didn't get the chance in the Harding game because the internet signal was so bad down there that we just didn't get a chance to do our halftime or our end of the game report for uh, Facebook Live for Henry, but Henry, big Greyhound supporter, and we've always thanked him for being a supporter of Newport Greyhound football, and graduating, you know, say it all the time, 1983, and six generations of folks right here in Jackson County, been here a long time, but we want to thank them along with Fathead Pizza. Hey, uh, looking back just uh, over your career, what, what stands out in your career, you know, playing for the Greyhound? Anything in particular? I'm gonna say it had to be Dollar Way junior year, we're getting beat. But uh, no, it's 10th grade. We played Dollarway 10th grade year at Dollarway. And just walking into that locker room and, and then walking on the field at Dollarway, I mean, it was just, it, it just wasn't what we were accustomed to at Newport. Right. I mean, it was just, anyways, we get out there. I think Carl Turner ran for 280. And I think Kristen Crump ran for probably 220. I mean, it was ridiculous. <laughs> and then you start thinking about uh, Josh Liddell was on the team for Dollarway. He ended up yeah. playing free safety. He ended up. Uh, playing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for a little bit. But you just think back how many athletes were on that field that could go play wherever they wanted to. We ended up getting beat. Uh, I was a 10th grader, didn't play much, played a lot of special teams. Uh, I'll never forget, Jeremy Poole comes over there and says, we're going to take a field goal win, and I'm on the field goal team. Right. I'm like, I'm going to be in for the winning play against Dollarway. I mean, I was... I got out there, knew I was ready, had it tight, had that chin strap ready. Guy comes off the edge, wasn't my guy, comes off the other edge and blocks the kick, and that's how we ended up losing. But that was that was one of the games where I was just like, man, I just sat back, because I really got to see the game. I wasn't out there, and I just really got to see it as a 10th grader. Just grown men. I mean, I wasn't really accustomed to it. You go from junior high, I'm telling you, junior high playing Thursday night, you think you're ready. But when you see Friday night hitting, it's a different world. It's a big time. <laughs> it's the speed of the game. Well, I, I want to talk a little bit about 1972, a football team that sometimes kind of gets forgotten in the mix of the great football team. I played on that team, and uh, we played for a state championship in 1972, and most people don't, that they just forget that because the great years that Coach Keedy had, you know, in 19, kind of to, to go back a little bit, 1968, John Pennington and group, his senior class, played on the undefeated football team here. They were 10-0. And then the next year, 10 and one, led by Bobby Joe Forster, who was the quarterback, and uh, uh, 10 and one, and win a state championship. Those years, we didn't win it in '68, we did in '69. It was voted on by the state newspapers, the United Press, and then uh, also the Arkansas Democrat, and Arkansas uh, Gazette had two different newspapers at the time. But anyway, 
Uh, and then uh, 71, we were three and seven, didn't have a great year, and I didn't play, uh, you know, on that team as such. But anyway, the my sophomore year, we were six two and one, had a great senior class. My junior year, we didn't have a clue. We didn't have a clue. Joe David Smith was a star quarterback for us, and uh, he got hurt in game one. And uh, when Joe got hurt, we had to start a sophomore quarterback the next week, a kid named Steve Sink, related to John Sink, uh, uh, Greg Sink, all the Sink family. And uh, But anyway, and this guy was a true quarterback, and when Joe David got back from his shoulder injury about oh, two or three weeks later, we moved him to running back, and we got to click, and we won 11 games in a row. Here's the key. We lost a win that year, 28-7, to seven, game one at win in the play. I mean, the first round of the in the first game of the year, 28 to 7. We won nine in a row. And to go to the playoffs in 1972, you had to be the conference champ. And we were the conference champ, and win was the conference champ. They lost one game to Four City. We lost one to win. So we matched up against the Win Yellow Jacket. And we were a lot better in week 10 than we were in week one. So we matched up with those guys at win. Here's the story I want to tell about today. We win this football game 15 to 14. 15 to 14, just a, it was just a, a, a classic. No, we win a football game 21 15, excuse me. We score a touchdown on a play that Joe David Smith runs 63 yards on untouched called Eagle Pitch Left and his third touchdown of the night. Joe David Smith was a great running back. Bubba Michael played on the team. He was a great quarterback, a great uh, running back. Also played defense. Uh, uh, Joe Gay was the fullback. Sink, I said, was the, the uh, he was a quarterback. Dennis Haywood played on that team. Just trying to think. Sam Nicholson and I were the linebackers on that team. We win that ball game 21 to 15, and we had an opportunity when we scored right before the half. It was 15 to 13, and we had the opportunity to go for two. We were going, to, you know, we said we're going to tie this thing up. And Coach Couch called for one. We had a great kicker named Jim Goss, the Golden Toe. So the toe comes out. We go, what? What in the world? As kids, we say, why are we not going for two on this? We're going to kick it like 15 14. We don't want the lead at half. We're going to get in And we got into that dressing room, and Coach Dale Counts told us, said, guys, let me tell you one. He said, y'all probably don't know this, but he said, uh, he said, nobody, nobody has scored on us in the second half all year long. Nobody scored on their defense. He said, I think we're good enough to score one more, and I don't think they'll score on you. And I said, that's why I didn't go for two, because I knew you'd score in the second half. And we did. Four minutes and 43 seconds to go in the fourth quarter on a 63-yard run by Joe David Smith on eagle pitch or quick pitch left. We win the ball game the next week at Harrison, I mean at Conway against Harrison 9 to nothing, then lose 21 to 13. Magnolia in 1972 for the state championship at War Memorial Stadium. But uh, a lot of fun playing for the Greyhounds. And, 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 and I think guys still, you're a lot younger than me. And you're, I mean, you guys felt it, didn't you, when you play? And you feel it, the kids still feel it, and they feel that Greyhound spirit. And there's nothing, I mean, absolutely nothing when you put on a orange helmet and you run through that. that we had the helmet. Y'all had the paper. We had, the paper. we had a helmet. When you run through that and hear everybody with those cowbells, I mean, it's just different. It's I mean, it's different than anywhere else in, in, in the state of Arkansas that I've been to. I've seen a lot of places, but it just it just feels different. When you go to Graham Field, you just hear the cowbells and everybody's screaming your name and with that orange helmet on. I mean, it just means something. You walk by that Keeney building, you look at all the guys with the conference champs and co-conference, and then you look to the end zone and you see the state champions up there. I mean, it just, it, you can just feel it. You can feel it. It feels good. Won three of them, won the one that I talked about earlier in 69, and won them on the field in 81 and 91. 81, the great Billy Warren, who uh, made a comment tonight, visited with Vincent Burton on Facebook. He's got a little Facebook post going on about naming some of the great players from your hometown. Billy Warren was as good a running back, and I was coaching at the time. I didn't get to see him play a lot, but as good a running back that ever played here. And what people don't remember about Billy Warren, he was a better linebacker. He was an all-American running back, all-American running back. But he was a better linebacker than he was running back. And then that guy was just fantastic. And in 91, of course, what, what you know, uh, Joey Henry, who one of the co-owners, he and Mark is here, he played on the 91 championship team and, and, and a hard-nosed kid, just a fighter, just played in you know, the defensive line, offensive line, and just a kid that just got after folks. And, you know, you look at him now and you go, 
you helped him, were you? He, he, he wasn't just a mean guy. He was just a great football player, and it meant something to him. It meant Bubba Phelps runs a big, uh, oh, I don't remember how far it was, but a big drive. Uh, uh, the Hounds won seven nothing in the third quarter, and uh, Bubba had a big run and to help us to uh, you know, propel us to a state championship in 91. And then, then uh, you know, we played for one in 88, Dollar Way beat us. We played for one in 89, and Dollar Way beat us. And then we played in the semifinals in 90, and Dollar Way beat us. And Dollar Way won five state championships in a row. Five in a row during that time. They won three at either AAA or AA, whatever we were at the time. And then they moved down and won two more. They, they won in 88, 89, and 90. And, uh, uh, 89 is the year that uh, we had them beat three to nothing and uh, fumbled the ball in the end zone. And they recovered it late in the game and won seven to three. And it was, you know, still to this day the most crucial defeat I ever remember as a, as a Newport Graham. But uh, you, you don't ever get over those. You don't ever, I, I was announcing, you know, <laughs> you don't get over those, but you just you, you learn to live with them, no doubt. And uh, uh, the late great coach Bill Keaty was our coach, and, uh, and I heard Bud Black tell the story about. Bud and Kenny and Coach Keedy at the in the locker room at the end of the ball game, all crying, just bawling their eyes out. Nineteen eighty nine, we we had a state championship, and Coach Keedy had, had made a comment. He said, I, I, he said, I've let, he said, uh, I've let everybody down. He said, I've let the town down, I've let the school down, I've let my kids down, I've let y'all down. And you know, Bud told the story. He said, well, Coach, if you did. You did a pretty good job, but we're pretty proud of you. You didn't let us down. You didn't let us down at all. But, I mean, he, he got reestablished what we had. You know, we had some good teams before Coach got here, but uh, what a great run Bill Keaton had. I mean, it just, he, he had one of those runs that's just hard to it's hard to duplicate. But we talked about Coach Mark Hinesley and what he's done the last four years. He's on his way. <laughs> he's on his way. Well, it's, it's been great to, to talk about. We had a lot of people comment about this, and we want to remind everybody that uh, we need to make a comment about everybody. BP got on there and said, hey, guys, what's up, BP? BP, <laughs> what's up, brother? There's a guy who's been part of our broadcast team before, and, and uh, I've had a lot of people that have broadcast with, a lot of people that have, have, have been camera people for us. But, you know, Randy Kopechka and I have run the boat together for 20 years, and, and uh, of course, Bud and I did a long time, and, you know, Freeman Travis is part of the broadcast team, camera person, and uh, uh, Dan Kulpeska was a cameraman for us for a long, long time. Paul Duggar did it. Galen Farmer. Galen Farmer started as a cameraman with us many, many years ago. And, you know, I started full time in broadcasting in 1982 on the radio. The first time I was ever on the radio on a Greyhound football game was 1974. I helped Raymond Massey, who was a former coach, Coach Massey. I helped Raymond Massey do Greyhound football my freshman year of college. And when I got out, I said, that's what I want to do. I want to come back and help the Greyhounds. And then. I've told the story about, you know, got to be a coach there, and I always wanted to be the head coach of Graham. My last year coaching, I was 0 and 10, and that year Newport won a state championship, and I knew I'd never get a chance. <laughs> I thought that'd do something different. So I asked Bud Freeman, Freeman was uh, his broadcast partner, and Freeman had, had, had left and moved, and Bud, you know, graciously asked me to, to help him. I'd been the sideline reporter in 81. We had those in 81. I got to tell his story, too. I tell his grand story all that long. The great Al Evans, great late Al Evans. Here's how it worked. When we were on at home, I could listen to the game on transistor radio. I had a little headset, listen to them, said, okay, we'll go down to David Black. Hey, I'm down here on the sideline, blah, blah, blah. We're on the road. I couldn't hear it because I couldn't pick up the radio station. So we had a system. Here's our system. Way up in the press box, when you're on the road, you're on the other side. So way up in the press box, when they got ready for me to do, a report, Al Evans had a red flag and he waved the red flag. And then my response was if I saw him was for me to wave the red flag back at him. And that didn't mean I got to start. My starting time was when he waved the red flag back at me again. <laughs> That's how we did it. Technology wasn't wasn't real good, but we made oh, it work. Yeah. No, there wasn't any Wi Fi. <laughs> or you fire or do fire. Anybody else fire, but we're at Fathead Pizza and the, it leads us into this, guys. Uh, we're gonna do a sports show. You guys you guys are gonna do a sports show. Tell us tell us what we got planned, tell us what we're gonna do. Tell I mean a sports show, live Facebook sports show, we're gonna do it. A lot of times we're going to do it on location. In somebody's place of business, we're excited about a sports show. We're going to talk a lot of Greyhound football, but we're going to talk a lot of other stuff too. Tell us a little bit about what, just some of the things that, that, that are interesting that we, 
possibly do with this board show? Uh, uh, one thing that we talked about was doing like a Q and A. If somebody has anything that they want to ask, sure. as far as Greyhound knowledge, I mean. Between, I mean, David can get you, you know, back in the 20s and 30s. And, <laughs> and all that. I can get you more modern <laughs> in this decade. But we'll talk Cardinal baseball. We'll talk, I mean, we can talk anything. Red Bulls, we can talk the Hogs, even, even though they're really not watching right now for football. The basketball team on right now. But uh, just anything sports related. I, I really want questions is the thing that I was really wanting for the viewers. When they get on there, I want somebody to ask something. It may be something that you know and you just want to tell us or something you want answered. I promise you, if we don't know, we'll find out. So that was the big thing that I would do. Or we might ask the question that we don't know the answer right. to. Say, does somebody know this answer? And y'all let us know. And we, you know, uh, and, and that deal that Vincent has on, on the Facebook post right now, if you're not a friend with Vincent, send him a friend request because he's always talking sports and talking about those great, great athletes and great folks from you know all over the state of Arkansas. But uh, anyway... Sometimes I need a little help. I need a little help a lot of times. Yeah. You know, I mean, in people's opinion, you know, who's, you know, subjective and objectively, it's hard to, to gauge when you say who's the greatest running back of all time or who's the greatest football player of all time. And with that, I think you got to go era. I yeah. Mean, well, I mean, it's just a different football game than it was 50 years ago, even 20 years ago. It's just different. I, and I said we need to we need to talk about. The, the, the decade of the 60s, who were your best players in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. I totally agree. I posted that on Facebook earlier. Man, what about this sports show we're going to do? I'm excited. <clears throat> like Hayden said, uh, we talk Cardinal baseball, Red Bull football, basketball. It doesn't matter, man. We just want to talk sports. And, and this is just as much a learning experience for us as it is for the viewers, you know. And if y'all have some input, you know, we want to, we want y'all to interact. We want to interact with our viewers and, and just make this thing uh, fun and interesting to watch. And we want people to enjoy this show as much as what we're going to enjoy doing. Just well, the ex excitement at Newport. And I, I saw where you posted, we're still looking for a name. If anybody's got a name for it, we're open to anything. What did you say? Sports in the board? I got that. I, John Chadwell. I, I like that. To, I mean, yeah. I like that. But I mean, anything. I mean, we're, like Ben said, we're learning. We're just trying to bring excitement. Somebody that can get on here and just watch us talk for an hour or so if somebody and, wants to. And let me tell you what's going to happen, guys. It's not just going to be a Newport deal. This show will be watched. It'll be watched by a lot of people because if you get on there and you've got some good content, and, and I'm not saying that it will. If others are not great announcers. But we're just little amateur folks who love our community. But we're going to talk about our state. We're going to talk a lot about the Cardinals. We're going to talk a lot about stuff, sports, with people from all around the United States of America. And I can promise you this. People will watch this show. People will respond to the show. We will get Facebook requests to get on. You know, we'll have lots of people that want to be on the show. We're going to have some guests. But, and I say, we, y'all's idea, and y'all going to do this show. I'm, not, I'm just going to kind of sit you're back the, and hear the head out. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> get over here, and I want to talk just a little bit with Alton Walker. Alton Walker is the guy who does tons of stuff for our community. He takes his camera. He shoots picture after picture after picture after picture. Alton. Thank you for what you do for our community and our kids. Man, it's my honor, man, you know, to come back, you know, a Greyhound alumni, <coughs> to come back to this great city and capture the great things that's going on, man. I, it, it's therapeutic for me. Well, you've had some health issues that, that no doubt, like, uh, you know, we all have, but you've had some real health issues. You know, with your heart and you're feeling better and you're back at it, and I know you, you don't have as much energy as you used to. But my goodness gracious, thank you, and I know families love you taking these pictures. And people, if you're out there and, and you have the opportunity to, I, I know you're not out looking for money. You, you don't do it for the money. But if you ever thought about making a donation, you, you can make it in his name or, or, or whatever to your favorite charity or whatever, or, or, or give Alton a little boost, buy his lunch every now and then. But let me tell you what, he spends countless hours being a great Greyhound fan and a fan of all the kids. Well, thanks it. for what That's you do. I'm, I'm a fan, man. I said, there's nothing else better. I enjoy it. Like I said, you know, the energy may not be there a lot, but the heart is always there. <laughs> there you I, go. I bleed, I bleed orange and black to, to the core, man. There you go. It's a it's a lot of fun, you know. I love to look at your pictures you know, after a ball game. I mean, you might put two or three hundred pictures on there. That, you know, 
and, and then the artwork and stuff that you do with those pictures after the fact is just it's simply awesome. If you're not a friend of Alton Walker's, send him a friend request and you can see all those pictures too. Thank you, my yes, friend. Sir, you're welcome. Guys, on the sports show, we don't know when we're going to get started, but I, I mean, I assume it's going to be pretty soon. Well, what you, what, what's the plan? We're, we're working on equipment, we're working on Facebook Live, we're just, uh, we've got questions to answer. We're going we're to get us some sponsors. If, you're, if you think your business might want to uh, get on with us and be a sponsor on this, we're going to have some packages that are available from an advertising standpoint. You better get on the bandwagon early because once it sells out, and it'll sell out, it will sell out. And people will watch and people will respond and we'll be talking about your business just like we're talking about Fathead Pizza tonight. And uh, I mean, Newport guys are just going to put in a business and we're going to support those folks. And, uh, but I'm excited about where we're going and what we're doing at the Cable 15 TV deal. Oh, we thought out about it. It's exciting as a, or exciting as an understatement for me personally. I've always wanted to have my own niche in this business and uh, you know, with the television, you know, I grew up in it. You know, obviously y'all were radio guys. Uh, gone to you know, turn to TV and have done that and made a living at it a long time and uh, I'm just excited to, to be able to add my little uh, two cents to it. You know, Hayden? Uh, like I said, I'm just here. Ben asked me to do it and I, and I love talking sports. And I love being around these guys. I mean, even Josh, he's not, you can't see him. I just love being around these guys and talking sports with anybody. And I love Greyhounds. I love, I love every sport with Greyhounds. And, and I'm excited to do this with them. Well, it's going to be fun, and we're looking forward to it, and we think it'll be the biggest thing that we've ever done at Cable 15 TV. We're, I mean, we're more than overly excited to, to bring it to you. It's going to be Facebook Live, uh, it, and anybody that has Facebook, which is the world, has an opportunity to join us. I know we've had an absolute ton of people make comments tonight. We have been... You know, it's not our goal to, to, to get on here and, and, and identify everybody, but we appreciate everybody for commenting and, and uh, hope that you like what we're doing tonight because that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk sports. We're going to talk around sports, and we're going to talk lots of other things, too. I ain't going through the list right there. What if we can get us up? Hey, guys, anything else before we get off here? I'm ready for a pizza, baby. A supreme, large supreme. Yeah, what's with that? Oh, that's all for you? That's for me. Oh. <laughs> get the balls home, large supreme. Order cheese sticks, I'll be set. You have to carry me out in the wheelbarrow. Well, we talked about doing this all year long to get out here and try to get it done, and we finally, after the season over, found enough time to get it done. And uh, I was so glad that Alton joined us. And Josh, what a job he does of you know, camera work. As good as we've ever had, and, and, and we've had some great ones down through the years. Ben's a former cameraman. And, and Jace, did Jace help us at one time? Yeah, Jace helped us as it being a cameraman. And, and Ken helped us being a cameraman one time with this guy. Justin Klopeska. Justin Klopeska did years work. You know, if you start naming people, you really forget. We did a lot of those guys. Yeah, all those people. Uh, Kimberly Edwards and, yep. and, and Joseph Thomas. And, yeah. uh, anyway, it's just great. We, uh, you know, we don't plan this stuff. We don't have any script. We're just going to get on here and talk. We're just going to get on here and talk. Anything else, guys? From Fathead Pizza, that's one word, and it's all caps in Newport, Arkansas. It's Facebook Live. Thanks, everybody, for watching tonight. We'll be back soon with another edition of something along the line of a sports show. We don't know the name yet, but give us your recommendation.